All right, assalamualaikum everybody. Um, my speech is going to be on uh, God's promise for the Satan's promise. So uh, there are many verses in the Quran talking about God's promises, and we know that His promises are the truth, unlike Satan who breaks His promises and can only offer the illusions of this world to distract us from God. If we believe in God alone and follow His laws, then we can even be kings and queens in this life. We will have a peaceful life and nothing to fear. Surah 24, verse 55. God promises those among you who believe and lead a righteous life that He will make them sovereigns on earth as He did for those before them and will establish for them the religion He has chosen for them and will substitute peace and security for them in place of fear. All this because they worship Me alone. They never set up any idols besides Me. Those who disbelieve after this are the truly wicked. God promises to guide you in the right path and lead you home to Him. Satan will whisper to you to try and get you to disobey God's laws, but if you seek refuge, then God will help you ignore the whispers of the devil. Whispers. 7, verse 16. He said, Since you have willed that I go astray, I will scold for them on your straight path. I will come to them from before them and from behind them, and from their right and from their left. And you will find that most of them are unappreciative. God also promises us happiness in our lives, even when we get married, as long as we follow His laws and maintain our chastity. And they maintain their chastity. <laughs> Only with their spouses, or those who are rightfully theirs, do they have sexual relations. They are not to be blamed. If we don't follow God's laws of being chaste, then we will suffer miserably in our marriage and throughout our lives. This is what Satan wants us to do, and is why he tries to tempt us with girlfriends and boyfriends. But we have to overcome the temptations and wait until our wedding night. As for the one who disregards my message, he will have a miserable life, and we resurrect him on the day of resurrection blind. The hereafter is the greatest reward we could ask for. If we follow God's laws and lead a righteous life, then in the hereafter, God's promises promises us gardens with flowing streams and anything we can wish for. God uses allegories in the Quran to try and describe what heaven will be like, but these allegories are just for our minds to understand. Heaven is far greater than we can even imagine, and these allegories that God uses to describe heaven are amazing, but they don't even compare to what heaven is really like. Surah 10, verse 55. Absolutely, to God belongs everything in the heavens and the earth. Absolutely, God's promise is truth, but most of them do not know. The allegory of heaven, which is promised for the righteous, is flowing streams, inexhaustible provisions, and cool shade. Such is the destiny for those who observe righteousness, while the destiny for the disbelievers is hell. God promises happiness. If you didn't follow God's law and fell for Satan's temptations and believed in his empty promises, then all that is awaiting you in the hereafter is hell. Can you imagine being in hell forever? Indeed, those who were in sins and become surrounded by their evil work will be the dwellers of hell. They, are, they abide in it forever. Therefore, you shall steadfastly persevere for God's promises the truth. And do not be intimidated by those who have not attained certain God will fulfill His promise in the hereafter. They will say, Praise be to God who fulfilled His promise to us and made us inherit the earth, enjoying paradise as we please. What a beautiful reward for the workers. <laughs> Satan has no power. He only has power over those who choose him as a God. God is omnipotent, and therefore God can and does keep His promises. I'm done. We are a little behind, guys, so I'm just going to take a few, few questions, inshallah. So, uh, okay, we'll do Arash and okay. Aliogo first, then Arash, and then Solomon. 
Oh, he did? Oh, look, I, look, I can't, I don't have eyes in the back of my head, so. Okay, so. No, it's okay, so it's Arash. Here, let's pass this down to him. All right, Ben, I got a question for you. All right. You, you being so handsome and, and good looking and tall and blue eyes and you got the whole shabam, how do you, how, how do you apply, mashallah, how do you apply these commandments as far as keeping yourself chaste and, you know, and, and applying God's commandments in your life? But what do you do and what's your advice to your peers and rest of your young brothers sitting behind me? Well, uh, basically, I just choose my friends carefully and I don't put myself in those situations. Can you explain what you said about uh, Satan promises girlfriends and boyfriends? Oh, um, yeah. So, uh, so his promises are uh, in this life, and he can only give you illusions and stuff, and I don't know things that are fun, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, that's why he wants you to do bad things, also. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. All right, Ben. I forgot. All right. <clears throat> What's your like favorite promise that God promises us? What's the one that um, you enjoy the most? Well, uh. My favorite one is the one I haven't gotten to uh, enjoy because it's the hereafter and I'm not there yet. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. What, what's your favorite one that you've enjoyed then so far? I don't know. All right. Have a good night. All right. Thank you, guys. Mashallah. Good job, Ben. Woo.